think I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready to talk about some. I love that freaking thing. Yeah, I can't get over cool. it. Uh, welcome back to Two Lowly Investigators, everybody. Uh, hello, fellow investigators. Who are not lowly. Yeah, we're the lowliest yes, of the ones. Yes. So today we're going to be talking about the uh, Pathic Arcosa Black Stars Rise pack. Um, Teller and I just got done looking through it, and it seems pretty fun. So I'm going to do something a little different than we usually do today. I'm going to kind of click around and do stuff while we're talking. So... Uh, we can actually have better insight on all the stuff we're talking about. Although our insight is always great. It's pristine. So um, the first card we have is called On the Hunt. So On the Hunt is a tactic event for uh, Guardians, Guardian, Paladin, Protector, Knights. Oh, yes. It's warrior, got a book, warrior class. <laughs> book and a fist. Cost one. And it says fast. Play when you're uh, withdrawn and counter card during the upkeep. Or during the Mythos phase, sorry. Uh, instead, search the top nine cards of the encounter deck for an enemy, spawn it, engage with you instead of its normal spawn location, and shuffle the encounter deck if you cannot draw the top card of the encounter deck. And, oh, sorry, shuffle the encounter deck. If you can't find one in the top nine, then you draw the top card of the encounter deck. So. Yeah. What did you think of this card, Kyle? Uh, I, I, I was not impressed. I thought personally. it has strategic value in a game that is very sometimes difficult to predict. So, like, I think if you knew a lot about what was about to happen, you could do a lot with On the Hunt, but um, I don't know if, the like, the best laid plans will work out all that time. So, like, it seems like it could be really cool, or maybe there's a card that's going to make it cool later. I'm not sure if Scrying will work with it well, you know, so you could be like, okay, right. we know some things in the top three that we need the, the, the Guardian to deal with, so let's play On the Hunt so we can get it out and get it where we need it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. I, I think this card might be really scenario specific. Oh, is yeah. what I'm what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So this because when you're drawing a card, like how many times do you like have you been like, man, I really want this monster engaged with me? Because mm -hmm. whenever we draw a card, when it spawns somewhere else, we're always like. Yeah, thank God we don't have to fight it. <laughs> so, like, oh man, uh, yeah, they were like, we're like, oh sweet, it spawned. Like in the first scenario, you can get the guy to spawn in the attic, and you, if like, if you're already done with that place, it never leaves. It just stays in the attic, and you're like, you don't have to worry about it at all, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but this one ignores that. But I guess if you're prepared for it, it's not so bad. Yeah. So, so I wasn't too impressed with this card personally. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next card, though, we, is our first non-rogue exceptional card. So last in the last set, rogues got like three exceptional cards, bang, 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 in three packs, and it was yeah. like, what the heck's going on here? You have like Ace in the Hole, the pocket watch, pocket watch, and then there was another one I can't remember. But um, this exceptional rule again, if you're if you're not familiar or you're new or you're watching for the first time, um, it is that when you buy this card into your deck with experience, you have to spend double the amount of pips to put it in your deck. And you can only have one copy of each exceptional card, I believe, um, as well. Yeah. Uh, but this is a permanent as well, so you'll notice that the top, the, the cost has a dash. It means that it doesn't cost you anything because it's going to be in play when you start the game. And as a reaction, before you draw your opening hand, you'll search your deck for three different tactic and or supply events. Attach them to the stick to the plan and shuffle your deck. Cards attached to stick to the plan may be played as if they were in your hand. An additional cost to play an attached card, you exhaust it. So you get three cards that are different named. Uh, so you can't like pull like three supply caches out. You then get to use those in addition to the five cards you draw, or you know eight or whatever. Yeah. If you're Sophia or Safina, which I don't think she can ever play this card. Uh, and then you'll um, you can play one of them a turn, because unless you can ready this asset, which is possible. Yeah. Um, like like a uh, Ashcan. I don't know if he can have this, but Ashcan Pete could easily do something like that, where. Uh, um, he like it, he can ready an asset, so there's cards that can ready assets. So, but yeah, I like this card. Mm -hmm. uh, it's six XP, but uh, like permanent, it's it's well worth it. And there's like so many things you can stick in here. So like uh, yeah, you're you're like your my first thought was Mark Harrigan because he yeah. can pull any tactics from any classes in. But these level zero, so when you pare down the list of tactics in the game to the ones that cost no experience yeah. you're kind of left with the ones that are very underwhelming for mark since he doesn't have good books or good feet you really can't use the rogue or the seeker ones yeah and you're left with like some of the survivor junk but pushing mark harrigan uh or pushing it out of just tactic cards makes it really cool too because you can use like supplies or like extra ammunition and things like that that are um 
good to have out if you need them. Yeah, absolutely. And then we saw cards like Dodge and Dynamite Blast. So yeah, and having one on the like one of those like on hand at all times would just be sweet. Yeah, yeah. And then and you're always going to be able to draw the other one too. So that's kind of sweet. I'm a big fan of this card. Yeah. This is this is a really cool and card. We were talking about the the nesting dolls of putting contraband oh yeah like uh, one of the cards you can pull out with this is prepare for the worst which lets you search the top nine for a weapon so if yeah. you like have like a, you have like a turn or maybe you have some cards in your hand that uh will facilitate this combo you can do like prepare for the worst to get a weapon or start off with a weapon and on your um prepare follow the plan uh, stick to the plan you can um have contraband and or extra ammunition yeah so you can just like pump up that firearm and have like a bunch of a bunch of like ammo and then like we saw there's another card that's actually a tactic called um eat lead it comes out in the next pack that lets you spend extra ammunition tokens to draw extra chaos tokens and then you gotta pick which one you want so you can like combo this stuff into like a guaranteed hit or yeah. kill on something so or like use the shotgun or the something to get like a bunch of extra damage yeah. if you pull like good tokens so I'm a, fan, I'm a fan of that card mm -hmm. um, the next card we have is called Guidance which Tyler and I <laughs> got into a thing about because this is like it's a super cool card so it's a zero cost event with a question mark icon so right there it's pretty good you get a free icon of your choice when you want to use it for skill test it's insight but it says choose another investigator at your location who has yet to take his or her turn this round. So someone who hasn't gone. So you want to have yeah. this person to go first. Um, the investigator may take an additional action during his or her turn. So we did a little. I, oh, I'm sorry. I did, and I showed Tyler yeah, yeah, a little bit of like kind of stuff to build <laughs> around. So um, I had an idea for a skids deck, and this is a deck that can get you up to ten actions a turn with the right cards and a guidance. So. A Mintifon skin or like any seeker in skids uh, or any seeker in guidance, but Mintifon helps the combo work better. So basically, you start with skids. Uh, you another player plays guidance on you before your turn. So when you start your turn, you have four actions. Then you can pay two resources for an extra action. That's five. Then you can also, uh, if you have Leo Deluca out, that's six. So right there, without doing any actions, we have six actions in a turn, which is double the normal actions that you can have in a turn. Um, on top of that, if you did the exceptional upgrade, or if you paid for the exceptional ace in the hole, you can get actually three more actions using one of the actions. So you'll be at, uh, was it six, seven, eight actions? And then you can kind of get all the way up to, uh, I think it's seven total when you're done. When you're done, because you could, like, if you had to do a skill test, you could play quick thinking and get back up to nine. And you end up taking, like, ten actions total in this turn. How did I get ten? There must have been another card. Oh, no, it was because 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. And so you can really, like, work the system with this. <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's not just guidance, but, yeah. There's there's so many actions. And if you can uh, think of any more ways to get actions, let us know because we love actions. <laughs> well, and so Tyler and I were thinking of maybe doing a Min Typhon Skids O'Toole deck for, like, the our personal play through Carcosa. So if you think that's a terrible idea or if you have any ideas for us, let us know because... <laughs> I think that's what we're going to commit to, and it might be terrible. So, but guidance, seekers just keep getting stronger and stronger. Like, like wow, like wowza, like bowza. All right, our next card is called Arcane Insight. So this uh, is the third of four non-mystic spells that we have in the game currently. The first of which were the upgrades to Arcane Glyph we got a few packs ago. Um, Arcane Glyph was the card. It was the second version of the like card that you have to do something thematically, or you have to do something in the story, and that lets you upgrade it after you've accomplished that task. So you had Arcane Glyph, which uh, it was guarding guarding stones and prophecy foretold, which are ones that um, you can evade enemies or you can get extra clues. Uh, this is a standalone arcane or spell. Yeah, straight, it's, straight up spell. Yeah, it's three costs, four experience, a brain, and a uh, book icon. Spell, of course, uses three charges and is a quick action, so none of the actions in your turn. When an investigator taking his or her turn spends one charge, your location gets minus two shroud at the end of the turn. Limit once per turn. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, four XP for it. It's kind of a lot. Very expensive mm -hmm. XP-wise. Especially when you get into like the non-first non one, non-corset thing. Because you have to like save up over multiple... 
like scenarios yeah to get four most of the time yeah when yeah. you're as bad as we are yeah definitely uh but it, it's a non-test spell and it's just straight up minus two shroud um and it works for other investigators i don't know if it's like better than a flashlight oh yeah i think so uh, it just so if you already paid the four experience and you have it in your deck putting out three for three is uh two more one more than a flashlight yeah, and you get um, the same amount of charges, but it happens for it's like a flashlight that can go for anybody, and it's the rest of their turn. So it's like you get effectively if you're going to investigate three or four times, depending on how many actions you had, you're getting more out of it than a flashlight could ever get. So each one of those charges could be a flashlight on its own if you played at the right time. All right, that's you're that's how I think about it anyway, because it's once per turn, so you could put it out on your turn, and then the subsequent three turns for everyone. You could use, use like a flashlight, shot. flashlight, flashlight, and yeah. for the entire turn. So yeah, that makes sense. I'm sold. It's it, the four XP cost is like is again it's super high though. Like not not over not like yeah. overbearingly high, but you're gonna need to save up. For yeah, it. if you had if you had two in these deck, two cards in your deck, uh, it might be a little restrictive. Maybe and like one would be uh, hard to draw. But I mean, so. there's a lot of decks that I've seen that like really don't have good upgrade options because they're like such solid core decks like the like the one I showed you earlier that we're going to talk about in a second it's like a deck where you're like I don't really know what to upgrade because there's not a lot of things in this deck that I could take out that could be upgraded so maybe in one of those decks where you can like fit just like one or two of them in you can like get some really you can trade them out with flashlights right so I don't know that's what I'm thinking uh, the, the first rogue card we have is called narrow escape it's a zero cost event with um, two feet it's a fortune, so Rex can't have it, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know that he... Yeah, he could, actually. He could pull this card in because it's zero XP. It's fast, and it says, when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity against you. So not just any attack. It's the opportunity attack you get for not attacking, evading, parlaying, or retreating. Right? Cancel that attack, and you get plus two skill value for the next test you perform this turn. Well, a zero cost skill... A zero cost event that's fast that cancels an attack is usually good. Oh, yes. And you just get the plus two for, like, a skill test, and which so. I like a lot. Uh, it's kind of like uh, the Seeker's uh, field research, mm -hmm. uh, which is really useful. The the only problem I see here is that, like, you don't disengage the enemy, so it's going to follow you most of the time, unless it's, like, a massive or something like that, right? Um which, this is, like, a super good card for, like, dealing with massive enemies because you leave and can do something really good. Um, if your next action isn't going to be to fight or evade, you're going to be attacked again, so it could save you one attack through a turn. Uh, but you could, like... There's uh, certain scenarios out there where you can um, get certain enemies at certain locations, and this is a good way to position. A super yes. good way to position. So, yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, definitely. I don't know that I have the prowess to build a deck like that, but I'm not very good at building rogue decks, so that's why this Carcosa Skids build is going to be janky and not like an actually effective rogue deck. <laughs> right, we're probably going to lose yeah. really bad, but so, we'll have a lot of action. <laughs> so this next card is called Suggestion. Um, it is a three-cost, four-experience asset, just like the other spell we saw. Um, it's got a, a brain and a foot icon. It uses three charges. As an action, you can evade, and you add your uh, your brain to your evade skill for the uh, this evasion attempt. If you do not succeed by two or more, remove a charge from suggestion. And as a reaction, when a non only enemy would attack you, base, just a basic attack, you can spend a charge to cancel the attack. Now, the thing I love about this card is that it gives you it has an a, effect on it that you can use even when there's no charges. Yeah, and that's that's really nice. I was. There's just, like, so few characters that can make use of this. There's one. So, yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's one character, one character that can make use of this. I, I guess I, mean, I guess Jenny could. Yeah. She, she, she would be at, with the ability, she has three across the board for all of her stats. She could be at six. Yeah, six is six is decent. And then... But is six is six in, in Jenny worth three X, or four XP and three cost? I don't know if it is yeah. just to, to be able to evade better and then rogues can already evade usually so i i, I don't know 
I think that Safina would definitely like this card because yeah, she so, would get four she, and four. Is Sophina, is Sophina Evader? Yeah, she's kind of already a good ev evader. Well, that's yeah, and so this would make her evades even better. And since she's not really a heavy fighter, she she could like that because and she could actually. Oh, well, I guess the thing I, I do kind of keep forgetting is that this is actually an evade action. It's not like the last card, because yeah, this is going to exhaust the enemy. So this is actually good for all the cards that she would use, because she gets an 8 an eight uh, value, of an 8 skill test evade, regardless of how many charges are on it, I think. And then she can just, like, backstab, or she can, not backstab, she can, like, sneak attack stuff, or she can deal with all the, other, like, exhausted enemy card stuff. And the second ability is just kind of icing. But again, super limited, 4 XP, 3 cost. It's very good if, when built around, I think, but not like a groundbreaking card that goes in every deck. Yeah. Groundbreaking. Oh, this next card is cool. So, this next card is called St. Hubert's Key. It's unique. Um, it's... Whoa. I didn't, I didn't really realize what was happening here. I was looking for like a key image, and I didn't realize it was some dude branding another dude. Yeah, man, there's some crazy mystic stuff going on here. Um, it's got a brain icon, and it costs four to play as an asset. It's an item, and it's a charm. And it says you get plus one uh, brain and plus one book and minus two sanity. And as a reaction, when you would be defeated by horror, you discard it and heal to horror. So you're like, okay, cool, right? Yeah. Seems all right. You get put bonus stats. There's cards that give me better bonus stats, but... I saw a post on Reddit that talked about St. Hubert's Key and using uh, a five, five Sanity or Lore Investigator. And people were building this deck around Ash Camp Pete. So I kind of took it and made it my own. I don't remember the person who originally posted it, but um, it, it starts off and based around the fact that when you play St. Hubert's Key, you can use every single Desperate skill. And the Desperate skills all give you four of an icon. So you're going to always be passing skill tests like whenever you have St. Hubert's Key out. And so you're like sitting there with three sanity the rest of the game, but you use people like Ash King or Peter Silvestri to kind of heal your or heal and tank your your sanity damage. So I think there's it's cool. It seems like it's a it's like a Johnny combo player card. Yeah, definitely. And then even for uh, normal mystics, if you want to go dangerous, uh, the plus one brains, the plus one book is pretty good. Yeah, if you'd like to live dangerously. Mm -hmm. And in the Ash Campeed deck, you can use it with Dark Horse. So if you played two copies of Dark Horse or even a copy of Dark Horse, you're getting plus two book, plus two brain, plus one fight, and plus one evade. And so you don't even have to, like... The desperate skills are literally for desperate times because you already have, like, six on all your stats. So um, the next card we have is Ward of Protection. Oh, God, I might have opened up email. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Okay. Uh, Ward of Protection... So this is the the third version of Water Protection that we've seen. So the first version again is uh the is the core set. It says the first version, not the version I'm going to talk about. I'll talk, read this version in a second. The first version says when you draw a non weakness treachery card, cancel this card's effects and take a horror. So very limited. Only you get it, and it's only treachery, is not enemies yeah. or anything else. This Water Protection that you're looking at right now, we're looking at right now, is. A two experience upgrade of it, same skill, same cost, same icons. Um, it's fast, so that's the same. But it, now it's upgraded from just you to say, play any when any investigator at any location draws a non weakness treachery card, you get the same effects as the base ward protection. Yeah. So this direction going this direction takes it so you can actually cover other people, much like a guardian would. Yeah. Um, which I think is a, this is like the prime upgrade for ward protection. Or if you're using experience, this is a great way to yeah, go. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other version of Water Protection, the five or the I think it's five cost. The five cost Water Protection it says when you draw a non weakness encounter card, so it changes back to a single person, but it's any encounter card out of the deck. You cancel it and discard it, which could be cool if you're playing solo. But I think this Water Protection is way more versatile. Definitely, what do you think, Tyler. You yeah, like it? and yeah, and I like Water Protection in general because it just knocks down the the uh, Mythos deck. Uh, yep. So anything that can keep that thing on the ground and squirming. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> it just keeps keeps plans in order. Mm, uh, that's a good point. So, and it's on, this one is on, only two XP. Uh, 
So it's very much in the affordable range if you have two cards in your deck. Uh, and it's nice because it's replaceable. So if you're already running Warder Protection, you don't have to think about what you want to pull out to put this in. Unless you didn't start with Warder Protection. Yeah. Yeah, so. definitely. That, to me, is always good because then I don't have to think as hard. Yeah. Uh, the next card we have is the another upgrade. Uh, it's an upgrade of the card Arcane Initiate. So Tyler and I really don't like this card. The, not, no, I'm sorry. Tyler and I don't really like the original version of this card because it's a one-cost asset that lets, makes you put Doom out and you'll need to search the top three spells and it's very weak, like as far as a shield, human shield goes. Yeah. Um, the upgraded version, though, changes a bunch of stuff about it that I think makes it more viable if you're going to use this card, if you're thinking about using this card. So it's a three experience upgrade. Now it costs zero instead of one. You get a fist icon instead of just a brain icon. And you can place, and when it comes into play, instead of just placing a doom, you can place a doom or two horror on it. So you get the choice of picking what's best for you. But you still do the same thing, which search the top three cards. So three cards can whiff hard. It's only like a tenth of your deck. It, well, I guess it's more than a tenth after you've played a little bit. But. Yeah, definitely. But it just, uh, like, it, I've seen people whiff on it a lot. Um, but it does get one extra sanity, which is nice. So Yeah, but if you're placing the two horror, it's one less sanity. It's a little more versatility, and I guess it's free. Mm -hmm. but I think the free is what makes it good for me, because like, you can play it for free to tutor a spell out. Yeah, uh, it's. I'm still not as a great fan of it. Usually, if you're a bit, if you're a mystic, you have enough spells. I've always had enough spells. Mm. Uh, I think what I like is easy. It like tries to kill itself, which means it can leave without you having to discard it. So it's like <laughs> she like finds a spell for you, and she's just like, I don't know what's going on oh, anymore. Thank you, master, for she teaching me. You around and like a tentacle comes out, oh. she's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> So, at least at the very least, it's like she wants to die, and you don't feel bad about like getting rid of a like cat or something like there's that. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, there's so many better like allies though. Yeah, you no. just have like the mystic well, patron. I don't even like... see this card as an ally. Like, I just see this card as like a, let's get it. Let's like let's uh, let's look through my deck for a spell, and it, this one makes that even better because I don't have to risk like the agenda advancing to do it. <laughs> so. I mean, I think it's the best version of the two if you were going to play it, but it's also, but, if it was 2 XP, it would be really, really good. But if you're, like, a good. mystic, like, you you probably have, like, two witherings or, like, two of those, like, mm -hmm. clue-searching spells, or, like, you, you probably have multiple spells, and you're, like, probably drawing them, and you're, you're probably at least being useful. And if, like, you're not drawing any of that stuff, the game's probably already, like just being really crappy for everyone <laughs> yeah that's probably fair. so it's like or, you know, or or the team is carrying you i forgot this isn't magic where like you absolutely have to draw cards or you lose the game so yeah all right our next card is going to be the first of the survivor cards not without a fight i like a uh, the, the names in this game for cards like they quote people that would be going through the thing that's happening on the card art <laughs> like it happened like watch this i can't get that card on my head <laughs> He just like, like guy jumps out of a car, shoots a, a like a like a elder thing, and then gold coins pop out, and you're like, sweet, this is like a video game. Ooh, um, coins! Not without a fight is a skill. It's a uh, innate skill, which will be important in a second. Um, it's got three icons on it, everything but books on it. So you know you're getting buffed up from everything, and it says you can only commit it though when you're engaged to an enemy, and for each enemy engaged with you, it gains those three skill icons again. So at the very least, when you play this card, you're getting two of each icon because you are engaged with the enemy, which means you can only play it then, and you get an extra set for every engaged enemy. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not good at Survivor, so I was like, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then Kyle pointed out that, like, you get all these icons for everything. Like, you get at least two fists if you're fighting something, and that's a lot in, like, two feet if you're running from mm -hmm. something and two feet's always good for running and brains if you're mythos engaged yeah i think william york loves this card just because he's already half guardian anyway so he's going to be doing things like taunting and he's going to be doing things like heroic rescuing so this is a card where like you can combo it with cards that pull so you're like taunt or you're like heroic rescue and or the card that's like lets you take the skill test for him yeah and then you're like plus two plus and not without a fight and then you're like, Brr! you're like a beat stick for five seconds, and then you get back to like a normal. You like, you, yeah. know, you do your rage buff, and then you're down back to normal. So, 
Uh, I don't know if it goes in every deck, but I do like it for William York a lot. So, um, I think that's fun. Uh, the final card we have at the set is called True Survivor. Now, I think that, like, I like the title on this card because it does feel like the epitome of a Survivor card. Because Survivor cards a like, like to pull stuff out of the discard pile. Even, like, William's effect is, like, to pull stuff yeah. out of the discard pile. And True Survivor lets you pull three and eight skills. For, for, for three costs, it costs three, and it has three experience costs, is what I was trying to say. Uh, you can pull three and eight skills from your discard pile into your hand. And we're looking through the innate skills list, and that's so that's every basic skill in the game: manual dexterity, overpower, guts, all that stuff is innate. So they don't have to be different names. So if you've used like two of your guts already, you can use this to pull your guts back out. But it's also skills that you like, kind of forget, don't forget about, or maybe don't use, or just didn't know about, like um, stroke of luck. Like if you whiffed on a stroke of luck and you didn't need to use it, but you committed it, you could grab it back and then try to exile it next time. Rise to the Occasion, which is a pretty cool survivor card. Then you get into the other things like Quick Thinking and Opportunist. So Opportunist is the one that comes back to your hand if you if you succeed by a certain amount, but if you whiff it, you can True Survivor right back yeah. in your hand. Um, you have things like Inspiring Presence, which is a really good card that we covered last time. It'll heal your allies if you're playing an ally deck, and it gives you three icons. I know uh, my so Amy plays Mintai Fawn a lot, and she uses Inspiring Inquiring Mind like all the time. So getting Inquiring Mind is back, and Min Typhon can have True Survivor, I believe. Or maybe it might be two, 0 to 2 XP, so I, I don't remember. But um, Then you have things like Fearless. is a great card that yeah. you can pull back because it heals you. Uh, Eureka. I actually don't know what Eureka is. Investigating, performing. Oh, that's the one we went through last time. Oh, okay. Eureka lets you tutor for top three uh, of cards of your deck. And then, of course, Not Without a Fight was an innate skill as well. Yeah. So. Super solid survivor yeah, card. Ton, tons of cards you can get back, and I think it's worth it just just for like the basic uh, skill cards because mm -hmm. I, I use those all the time. Uh, all the time. So uh, that's all for the pack review. I did want to talk to Tyler a little bit today on this pack review about uh, what he thought about the Labyrinth the Lunacy. Not spoilers, but just kind of like... So when we did the, the invocation event, we didn't do any of the invocation rules. We just played a, a six-player no, six Labyrinth of Lunacy game. And I was running it while like Tyler and a bunch of our other players were playing it together. So we had all of them split into groups of two, and so they did A, B, and C. If you're not familiar with Labyrinth of Lunacy, I would definitely look into it because it's super cool to watch. But what did you feel about it? Did you feel it was like, drastically different, better or worse than a normal like scenario? Uh, I liked it a lot. There's a lot of... Um... I thought it was going to be just one like giant thing where there's like six people playing a scenario, mm -hmm. but they, it was just uh, three groups of two people and it moved really fast. It was very interesting and it was re it's really cool how they split up the groups and how the groups interacted and stuff. So it's really cool how they do it. I suggest you check it out if you can. Yeah, and if you're local to Colorado, I had to, so they don't, they're not selling it yet or didn't print it, so I had to do some possibly illegal photocopying that I'm not selling <laughs> to get all of the cards for the packs out. So I do currently have three Labyrinth of Lunacy sets, basically. So if you are, if anybody is interested and wants to run Labyrinth of Lunacy and have me or Tyler GM that thing, because it's better if you actually have someone running it, I think. There's a lot of things that. You can make rule calls and go talk to people who are playing and kind of just be the person that's the reference. Uh, let me know in the comments or just um, IM us on Facebook or Collector Mania Facebook and let us know what you want to do because it is really unique and super fun when you play it with that many people. So it can be played with as low as one because you can just play the one by yourself up to 12. So the 12 would be three, four people per each group. Um, and you can also play like single standalones too. So we played the, what they call the epic multiplayer mode, which is... Um, where we break off into groups and each group's in a different part of the, the labyrinth but you can play the one-offs too and like the one-offs you just pick which one you want to start with and then you follow the story so uh, i agree it was really fun to watch so watching people try to strategize and how they were doing um like the different areas and what was happening to each person in different areas is so unique and the mechanics were reflecting that uniqueness of of stuff so um I don't, we won't talk about it here. Maybe we'll do like a spoiler one where we talk about all the stuff no, that was happening. Yeah, but um, try it out. Um, make sure that you guys, uh, if you haven't heard, check out any of the spoilers for Forgotten Era. That's the next um, cycle coming out. Looks pretty fun. It's going to be some Yig action, so I assume we're going to get poisoned to hell. Dinosaurs, maybe. Yeah, that would be cool too. Um, actually, I think if there's time travel at all, which could be, which is something we're already seen, and I think in. 
a little bit in Dunwich. There was like kind of like traveling through the universes and stuff, and I believe there was definitely some extra dimensions. That's unheard of in this <laughs> yeah, particular. <right. laughs> what do you mean extra dimensions? What are we talking about here? Some kind of sci-fi thing? Um, I believe Carcosa. Well, we've been really bad and haven't played the last pack yet, so um, I believe something happens in these next two where you're doing some type of dimension traveling as well. So um, keep an ear out for a Forgotten Era. We're getting more spoilers on that soon. Um, Dim Carcosa is next, and it's the final pack of the. Uh, pathocarcosis cycle so um i don't remember any spoilers from that but maybe that's a thing we should start doing is talking about what's currently spoiled for the actually we have the power we have the power oh my god doing it right meow yeah okay it's happening Dim people Dim there's three cards spoiled for it eat lead was one of them no stone stone unturned and cheat death so no stone unturned is the is a secret card that says to, it, you play it as a fast action and during any player's when like fast window and you choose an investigator, and that investigator searches their deck for a card and draws it and shuffles their deck. Hot damn for 5 XP. Oh, Seems yeah. cool. And then the next card we have is Cheat Death. So these are the cards that I thought were like, what the hell? Like, these are crazy. So it's another 5 cost. It's a 5 XP cost. It's fast and play when you be defeated. Disengage from each enemy. Discard all cards in your threat area. Heal to horror. Heal to damage. Move to any revealed location with no enemies. And if it's your turn, your turn ends. Remove cheat death from the game. And this is a rogue card. Yeah, this is a rogue card that costs 5 XP, and you remove it from the game when you're done. So, yeah. is remove from remove from the game different than exile? It is. It is. So, remove from game just means that you can't use it again this scenario, but you get it back later. Because Safina Rousseau, Rousseau does the remove from game stuff with her events, I believe. Well, there's no finding that out. We don't have that power. But, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yep. See you next time, investigators.